Hello, Scott here, and welcome to yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. And we are here again, uh, as stated in the previous video with uh, that I did for uh, Planet X Games, Big Eye Chungus. Uh, I'm going to be doing quite a few of these just back to back here, as I have a uh, backlog of things that I'd like to you know open up and get a first impression of and take a look at. And this one will prove <laughs> that uh, it's been delayed for some time now, but. Uh, it's still a bit timely, considering that Free League has recently uh, made these books available uh, for general retail. So, uh, my, you know, now's you know a better time than any to take a look at it and maybe see if uh, you know if these um, uh, if these books might be of interest to you. Uh, after I take a look at them and give my own first impression of them. So, uh, without further ado, as you can see, this one is open. Uh, I've already kind of took a look at it just to make sure it was inside. Uh, but, uh, but let's let's go ahead and get them out and take a peek because I haven't looked at them yet. So let's kind of fold that back a little bit and we'll move that one out of the way. And we'll kind of get these out. And I, I got to say, you know, I mean, no slight. I'm, well, a bit of a slight. Uh, I am not a fan. I am not a fan of Funnigan and the fact that they use peanuts for packing. I know it's a quick and easy way to kind of get, uh, uh, you know, things in there uh, nice and secure, but uh, they are goddamn freaking annoying and get everywhere. So I'm not going to close that end. That's got personal information on it, but slide it out of the way. And what do we have here? Well, we have, uh, let's see here. What is this? Okay, that's a little picture. We'll kind of set that aside for now. All right, we have... Uh, the Kickstarter uh, for Mythic Britain and Ireland uh, for for Basin, uh, along with Seasons of Mystery, which I believe are the um, uh, the secondary book of adventures that take place in 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 Britain and Ireland. Excuse me, I could be wrong though. Uh, it's been a while since I've kickstarted the or since I backed these. It's been a while since they've arrived. Uh, I've only took a look at the preliminary PDF before they even had most of the um, uh, artwork in Mythic Britain. So. Excuse me, Jesus. Uh, uh, so I don't remember <laughs> what's what's in these things. So uh, this will be my first look at them, uh, along with you, if you haven't seen these yet. So uh, let's start. Um, we'll go ahead and set uh, Seasons of Mystery aside. And let's see here. Sorry. There we are. Okay. Just trying to kind of keep stuff somewhat organized on this teeny tiny table. There we go. We'll just kind of put that there. Oh. All right. I'm going to set there. There we go. All right. Um, completely unprofessional. You know, par for the course. We like to maintain consistency here on this channel. So, to begin with, the cover for Vason and its books are not just a beautiful thing to behold, uh, but a wonderful thing to touch. I mean, these... The, these books have, um, you know, just just this wonderful appeal to them. Uh, you you can feel, you know, the uh, the the raised lettering here, uh, the the textured value of the cover. You know, you just you just want to kind of hold these and just kind of hold them close. Don't even want to read them. They're just they're just aesthetically pleasing for you know most of the senses. I haven't smelled it yet, uh, but it you know I'm it it just might smell good. We'll do that off camera though. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, a wonderful picture. You know, we, we've got someone bef uh, standing before, uh, you know, what might be a, a burial tomb or, or, or cairn, uh, you know, some sort of creature pointing above, above and, uh, you know, one of the investigators in there, you know, armed and wondering if they should go in. So opening it up. And what do we have inside? So uh, inside... Uh, Mythic Britain and Ireland. We have uh, six chapters, uh, along with some handouts, background tables, and the uh, bibliography uh, dealing with Mythic Iron and Britain, uh, the society. Uh, continue on with more information of the, so the society as it, uh, you know, how it conducts itself within, you know, uh, Britain and Ireland uh, outside of um, uh, where it normally is. We've got supernatural creatures uh, that are native to these lands. Uh, Old Meg, uh, the the Lanty Wheel incident, and the Hampst the Hampstead group, I believe, are three adventures that come with it. So, 
uh, carrying on in the wonderful tradition that uh, that uh, Faison does. There's a beautiful map of the uh, UK inside of here. Uh, it is it is it is stunning. Uh, it is well done. Uh, I think uh, probably the only complaint that I have, uh, you know, with this map, and likewise, um, you know, the previous map, and I compare it to the um, uh, the Warhammer Fourth Edition map of the Old World. Beautiful, uh, artistically pleasing, uh, something to behold. Um, almost completely unreadable uh, as far as some of the smaller details and lettering in there, uh, just because it's overwhelming, uh, you know, the detail inside that, you know, that some of the words here, you, you, you even those who don't need glasses, uh, you know, find it hard to read. It's not quite as busy as the Warhammer map, uh, but, um, you know, it, it's something that if it was, you know, on a, you know, a giant map, uh, it would be easier to read, but uh, still, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know if it, if if it, the, the words themselves can be highlighted a little better, but I don't know if that's going to take away from the aesthetic of the map. Uh, but, um, you know, as far as the artistic in integrity of the map, it holds up uh, the general usability, uh, you know, things such down in here. I just, unless you're familiar with, the, with these areas and what's there, you're not going to be able to read it <laughs> at all. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit unfortunate, uh, but, uh, you know, it would be nice to have some of these areas, um, you know, blown up and with a little bit less detail that allows you to, you know, zoom in on these locations. So, <clears throat> so welcome to Britain and Ireland as found in the, in the world of Vason. London is the heart of a thriving empire ruled by Queen Victoria railway lines, Radiate, radiate out from the capital, connecting it to the nation's other great cities and carrying people and goods to all parts of the country. Between the cities, the countryside remains as it has since the Middle Ages, ruled by the twin forces of tradition and superstition. Right, so that's a nice intro to it. So we go on to describe the uh, four nations, uh, which is England, uh, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Uh, we have a sidebar here dealing with history and fantasy. Uh, carrying on with certain conflicts in the different societies, uh, Finian fairies and others, and there's a lot of that within within the Basin books. If you don't own, you know, some of the uh, you know the original course and the others, uh, you know, there's going to be your general bit of information along with some sidebars uh, retaining to specific things within the world, and also gaming advice and dealing with um, uh, historical aspects because this takes place in a uh, alternative part of our world, uh, and and you know it, it's the, the time that it takes place in is a you know it's a it's a bit uh, uh, troubling, uh, not of our own, and so there's certain things that you know some people should be made aware of, and you know how to conduct a uh, uh, not really an alt history game, but uh, dealing with certain aspects of history that exist then, and you know if, how you should play them out, use them, or if you should even utilize them at all. Okay, so we go into some details of the area, uh, the various currency around. So we're just going to, it looks like we're just going to deal with as it builds up the uh, the setting itself, the, uh, the the bit of world building here. So yeah, so for example, here, social class, optional. Uh, nobility, middle class, and working class was something that uh, definitely existed at the time. Uh, there were um, uh, strict uh, rules that uh, divided these working classes and quite a bit of a... Uh, um, you know, effort and ability was utilized to maintain these divisions uh, as best they can. So uh, it's it could be a bit of a controversial considering the outlook we have today, but uh, it's not something that, you know, can't be wholly played out uh, within, you know, historical games such as this, but um, uh, definitely something that can be, you know, utilized with a bit of sensitivity, uh, not just the world that we live in, but uh, also the people we surround ourselves with. Okay, hopefully that edit wasn't uh, too obvious. I uh, just got a call <laughs> regarding my daughter's broken arm from uh, uh, from her doctor and trying to get, get her in to get her cast on. So um, hopefully it'll be nice and neat <laughs> in, the, in the editing booth uh, before I submit it. Anyways, carrying on. Yeah, so uh, yes, you know, social class. Uh, if, if you're going to use this, you know, consider it to be an optional part to, you know, breathe a little bit more life into the life and times of where the setting takes place. 
um, you know, obviously, you know, use it, uh, uh, you know, be be aware, you know, just just be aware of it and, and the people that you're playing with. OK, carrying on. Um, so we have uh, a little sidebar there on human monsters. Of course, you know, things that spring to mind during that period would be Jack the Ripper, of course, uh, Sweeney Todd, uh, Burke and Hare, Spring Hill Jack. Uh, you know, some of these would be you know, not necessarily be Vason, uh, but they could be Vason adjacent or uh, just, you know, general, just just human monsters as noted there. OK, um, important cities. We you know, we've got London, Liverpool, Manchester, Dublin, Belfast, Cardiff and so on. Um, specific, uh, you know, sites within there, the Tower of London, uh, Parliament, Westminster Abbey, Scotland Yard and so on and then okay yeah see this this is a beautiful map uh this is a beautiful map of london right here and still the lettering is small but the, the even though the the some of these letters are small they're not um uh situated over a uh a, a very busy background uh so even though this is um may not be as easy to read uh, as far as those of us who are starting to learn that you need glasses, uh, I, you can read probably 90% of it here. And then if you need to pop on the old specs uh, to zoom in on something, you can uh, without having to, you know, without some of the letters being lost due to the background noise. Beautiful map. Beautiful, beautiful map. Uh, Non-player characters. Uh, characters of the times over here. Actor, artisan, counselor, gambler, fishwife. Or no, herb wife, <laughs> uh, lawyer, popper, prize fighter, and so on. Uh, of course, we're going to have some celebrity encounters of the time, and I'm just kind of curious if they're going to. Yes, they do mix it between uh, fictional characters and real life characters or real life people of the time. Uh, Charles Babbage and Alistair Crowley for one, but then we have uh, Mycroft Holmes and Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Henry Jekyll mixed in there. So if you're a fan of that era, like, well, like I am, uh, it, you know, you, you have uh, a bit of brief description here of them in order to inject them into your game and how, you know, and how they would function within Basin itself. <clears throat> Various societies and groups of the times. Of course, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn would be there. Yes, it is. Uh, the Freemasons and so on. And then, ah, okay. First, I just, these are one of the things why you buy Basin. Uh, just, just the artwork, uh, enough can't be said about this, you know, the, the, the spectacular artwork that that's, that's done for this game, uh, you know, just evokes this, this sense of not only wonder, but horror and dread at the same time. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not appalling, uh, but I, it is truly, you know, scary. Uh, you know, the young baby in its crib you know, is this horrific beast, uh, you know, oozing from the ceiling, you know, on a tendril of I mean, black smoker ooze, uh, long fingers. Uh, what is it going to do with this child? So carrying on mysterious places around England, Loch Ness, of course, um, Wayland Smithy and uh, the Giant's Causeway. And so on. So parallel worlds. Okay, so we're getting to uh, um, Anwen uh, Tiernanag. I know I'm probably not pronouncing that right. The She, Walking Between Worlds. And then Fae Places. So some of these things, some of this information is is available uh, in, va in Vason. Typically, you know, but uh, this is going to have a bit of a British uh, flair to them. So the society as it exists over here. So let's see here. John Dee was a scientific and astrological advisor to Queen Elizabeth I of England. Uh, while in London, he met with the adventuring and courtier Sir Walter Riley and, you know, history and history after that. So uh, that is not a new story. Uh, there's a wonderful game out there called The Desanction uh, that, you know, that utilizes John Dee as, you know, as a kind of a one who started his, his own society within the, the uh, game itself called The Desanction. Uh, whose job is very similar to how Vason conduct themselves in here. Uh, you know, the society conduct themselves within Vason, but um, not entirely the same. Definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you, um, you know, are are a fan of, you know, 
John D, the, the time within John D, which, you know, takes place uh, in a different time period, but uh, just the story of John D itself. And also, if you're a fan of, you know, the certain period aspects dealing with the, uh, the mysterious and the, uh, you know, and the fae and the magical and witchcraft and so on. <clears throat> so obviously that's going to tell its own society on how probably how John D started the society here in England, uh, as opposed to how it, uh, came to be or came to pass within, um, uh, within the uh, Norwegian lands that Vason takes place in. All right, carrying on. Uh, ah, okay, Ribbon. Yep, we've got a beautiful, you know, games, you know, we can't get enough of ribbons. Games, uh, game books should have more and more ribbons. Uh, new archetypes within the game. So we have an athlete, an entertainer, acting, uh, socialite. Oh, just three? Okay. Well, I mean, you get plenty within Basin itself. So uh, all of those are going to carry over. Uh, to you know, London and 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 why well, in England and Ireland and you know the four, uh, you know countries themselves. But um, but uh, anyways, 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 carrying on. Okay, so new supernatural creatures. So we've got new aspects to deal with. Uh, we've got banshees, uh, black dogs, bogarts. We've got the Dulahan. I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Also, probably the uh, the Glastig, Glastig. We have the Hag. That that's fantastic. Uh, let's see here, and we've got the Knocker, the Leprechaun. Do not take his lucky charms. Uh, the Knuckle of E, the Pixie. The puka and the red cap. Yeah, it's, I mean, some of those who who have been playing in fantasy role playing games or D anD D are going to be familiar with their, you know, D anD D aspects. But these are these are more rooted in traditional folklore and and um, fairy tales as opposed to those being more of a D anD D aspect. All right, getting another call. So let's just pause this again and see if we can fix it in the edit. Okay. Oh, excuse me. We are back. Um, hopefully, again, <laughs> the edit is going to be somewhat seamless, but if not, oh well. Um, so where were we? Because it's been a while. That was a long call. And I'm sure dealing with, um, you know, dealing with doctors in the hospital worldwide is a frustrating and time-consuming process. So uh, we were looking at the monsters, and I believe we were talking about how um, you know, there are there are D&D equivalents of these monsters you may be familiar with, but these are more in line with their true uh, folklore and fairy tale aspects. All right. So and then continuing uh, continuing on, it seems to present, uh, you know, the existing basin that are in the other books and, you know, their um, their aspects that they would uh, be utilized as over in England and Ireland. Uh, such things as the mermaid, the troll. And then we, we continue on through the adventure. So we have uh, Old Meg. Oh, and I didn't notice that. They have little content warnings up here on the top, which are helpful. Uh, violence, child death, and mutilation. Uh, so if any of those things aren't your jam, <laughs> um, gaming-wise, I, I, I want to add um, that uh, this particular adventure may not be for you. And we'll just kind of flip through these because we don't want to give away too many spoilers. So, of course, there's going to be the... You know the maps and the, the the wonderful NPC illustrations that are in the other books. And let's see, I believe there was three adventures. And the next one we have the uh, <clears throat> the Lanty Will incident, uh, dealing with a what were those called? And knocker, yeah. And then this one has violence and death. And continuing on, we have we have the Hampstead group. Uh, drug use, violence, death, and gore. And then I believe we're just going to have some handouts. Yep. And then the handouts are always very nice. Um, on par with the uh, Chaosium handouts. And then we have some helpful tables in the back. And the bibliography from the inspiration. And then we have the, um, the little statuary that, if, is, that is in the back. 
of Pookie's uh, Nook, where he does his unboxing. So, <clears throat> all right. So, leave the mythic north and set sail for the misshrouded isles of mythic Britain and Ireland. Explore the bustling streets of London. Discover the secrets of Rose House and the British Society. Roam the islands and walk the moors in search of long lost tales and in ancient remnants. There you go. So that is the core rule book. Uh, so if you are enjoying Vason um, and you've been playing with it, but you're looking to change up the uh, the setting a bit, this looks like this is going to be a fantastic addition uh, for your Vason game or your campaign if you're running a long term game. Um, <clears throat> I mean, not much more to say about it. It's it has all the information you need. It looks fantastic. It's pretty much identical in form and format to the other Basin books. And it's got, you know, the 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 beautiful, just just wonderfully just mm, cover. Um, and the uh, fantastic artwork to accompany it. So we'll set that aside. And then we're going to take a look at what came with it. <clears throat> Seasons of Mystery. So... I'm just going to read the back of this real quick just to see what it is. Okay, still are the forests, large and small, wrapped in the frosty white, only the distant winterfall murmurs and hums in the night. The niece listens and, half in a dream, thinks it's a time-ceaseless stream, wonders which way it is going and from what source it is flowing. Um, <clears throat> Willy Wonka. No, I mean uh, Victor Redberg. <laughs> So yeah, so the, these are going to be adventures, and and once again, same thing. Uh, you know, beautiful textured cover, uh, evocative uh, artwork. There's no denying that. You know, if that wasn't there, that this is a Vason book. And so, what do we have inside Seasons of Mystery? Uh, let's see here. So, uh, ooh, there's no. Oh, here we go. Uh, so yes, uh, contents: A Dance with Death. Fireheart, The Devil on the Moor, and A Winter's Tale. Uh, within these pages, you'll find four spine-tingling mysteries for Vase and Nordic horror role-playing. These cases follow the turn of the seasons across one year in the mythic north. Okay, so this is not one that uh, uh, coincides with the uh, the mythic Britain and Ireland book. This is this is for more mysteries for uh, the northern adventures. But, oh, here we go. All right, I spoke too soon. So... If you in Mythic Britain and Ireland, if you want to run this mystery in Mythic Britain and Ireland instead of Mythic North, a good idea to choose would be the okay. So uh, to choose the west coast of Lorgrob near Outerod, Country Galway, Gavelkind or Gavelkind. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm sure I butchered that one too. Uh, so um, yeah, so it looks like granted the the primary focus on is on that, but it seems like now that they'll probably have. Uh, these little suggestions if you want to run it in the different setting. So not much to say. Uh, it's going to have, you know, the, the typical maps like there are the adventures along with the, you know, the, the kind of neat NPC um, uh, portraits they have. And, and some of these do tend to ha be a caricature of, uh, of, of celebrities and other icons. So uh, when you're looking through them, uh, keep an eye out because, you know, if, if you think it looks like somebody... It probably does. Uh, so let's see here. Yep. So we've got the first adventure. Oh, uh, more of the fun again, creating peanuts. Good times. Uh, next one, we have Fireheart. Um, uh, let's see just what's the synopsis. Uh, this mystery for the role-playing game brings the player character to scenic province of Dalarna in springtime with its green woods, brown cabins, and the blue waters of Lake Siljan. There, there they will be introduced to a Swedish dance and folk music tradition and see darkness hiding behind the joy of the music. All right. Oops, sorry, I'm just going to check something here. All right, yeah, sorry, I just want to make sure my mic was, was still functioning because uh, it was on pause for a while. All right, so what was the next one? The next one was... <clears throat> there we are, Fireheart. So what is Fireheart. This mystery brings the player characters to the deep southern woods of Smolandia. These lands are ravaged by heat waves and wildfires, tr triggering poverty, hunger, and mass immigration to America. The player characters are drawn into the situation by two brothers who run an ironworks by the lake, by the shore of Lake Heron. Can they uncover the cause of the fires and save the area from ruin? All right. And then continuing on through that, the 
Third Adventure. Ooh. Beautiful. Uh, the Devil on the Moor. The characters travel to a godforsaken moor on the west coast of Jutland, where am- ambitious engineers have awakened dark forces in their quest to tame and modernize the landscape. And that's an ongoing theme uh, in Vason, you know, is the, uh, the Industrial Revolution and the modernization of the rural areas, and not just nature fighting back, but the Vason themselves. All right, and then, whew, yes. And then finally, we have A Winter's Tale, wherein the characters suffer an accident, get stuck in the dark, cold, and are challenged by a mysterious adversary under the glittering winter stars. All right. And wait, what? Hold on a minute. Um, the Winchester Brothers. <laughs> uh, see, I told you. I told ya. All right. Uh, let's see here. Carrying on. And then we have the handouts. And there you are. So, yeah. So four more adventures. Uh, so this is um, uh, Seasons of Mystery. So uh, winter themed, it seems like. So, uh, yeah. So those those were those were the two books that came with the Kickstarter. Uh, there's a couple minor things here that additionally came with it. Uh, there was a print of the uh, black dog uh, that is a uh, beautiful cardboard print. Uh, definitely something worthy of being framed. Um, not really what I would have picked myself personally if I had a choice, but uh, uh, still an, still excellent nonetheless. And then we have um, uh, maps and handouts. Huh. All right, I'm going to take a quick look at these. I'm kind of curious... I didn't. I did not back the original basin, uh, so I did not get the extras, the handouts, or anything. Uh, so I'm kind of curious what the quality of the handouts are. Are they just you know printouts of the pages? Or are they something a little bit more special? All right, opening these up, and let's see here. Kind of move you up here out of the way. There we are. All right. Oh, wow. These are a nice material. Okay. Oh, double-sided. Excellent. Save on some paper there. All right. Yeah, I mean, these... Oh, oh yeah, these are these are actual handouts. Okay, so yeah, these uh, these are, you know, pretty much on par with the uh, the Chaosium handouts that you would get if you bought, you know, their, their licensed material. Uh, the paper quality is a, a lot nicer, though. And, uh... <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, so <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna get some water here. Oh. All right, so yeah, so as stated earlier, you know, now it's clear. Um, you know, I, I can see you know some of the smaller things here. It's a lot easier uh, to read, but uh, yeah, as beautiful as this map is, uh, in order to appreciate it, it definitely needs to be blown up to this size or larger. Uh, in order to catch all of the, you know, the small labeling and the details of it unto itself. Is there something on the map? Yep, probably of London. It is of London. Oh, London town. All right. There we go. And and a piece of cardboard. Um, so there we go. That is the Vason Mythic Britain in Ireland Kickstarter. Uh, beautiful, beautiful books. Uh, if you're a fan of Vason like I am and are currently playing the game, these are definitely a must-have. Um, you know, not only to you know expand the uh, setting itself to other regions, but to you know add uh, to the immersion and the experience to where you're currently playing in. Nothing says that an owl has to take place over in Britain or Ireland. You can merge the two together. Uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the way that they're rolling with Vason, uh, there can't be enough. And I look forward to their other offerings that hopefully may come out in the future as it expands. So um, these are now available uh, as far as my understanding is. Uh, This was just yesterday. Today is the 12th of October. And I believe that they were made available officially through retail, um, or at least through uh, Free League site. But I'm sure be coming to retail hopefully soon. So, uh, you know, pick up a copy, uh, preferably through your, uh, you know, friendly local game store. 
Uh, but if you don't have that, I'm sure you can get these through Free League, and soon enough, I'm sure also through uh, you know Amazon and other outlets. But uh, if, if you're going to spend a pretty penny, please do it with uh, you know your local retailers first if you're able to, and then you know from that point on, you'll obviously get it from from Free League if you can. So. There we go. A little bit choppy, uh, you know, dealing with the personal aspects of these things happen when you're doing videos. Uh, but that concludes yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. And uh, if, if you've forgotten already, <laughs> my name is Scott. Uh, Going to be doing maybe a couple more of these back to back today. Like I said, uh, what I'll be doing next, I don't know, but we'll find out. So until next video, have a wonderful day.